So today we will be, uh, begin our discussion on floating production storage and offloading systems. In short, these are called FPSOs. Now you, you may have simply float, floating production systems, they are called FPS. So these are the two types of, uh, the other type you will find is called floating production systems. They do not have any storage facility. So floating production systems are called FPSs. So it, it is very common. So you find that these two categories are normally in the offshore industry. <coughs> Now there are certain features which you should remember about these two. So we will discuss here before we go to all the semi submersibles. Now um, the FPSOs, there are basically two categories. FPSOs you will find one is called the new build Aframax tanker. So this is essentially a tanker form, you know. So this is modified. Tanker has been modified to FPSO. So when you go to industry, you will come across this, that most of these FPSOs, they are modified Aframax tankers. And the other is, they are also called new build, but these are not the modified variety, these are called barge configurations. So uh, uh, these are uh, configured to FSO. So you have two distinct, uh, one is Aframax tankers which have been converted to FPSO and the other is barge which has been configured to FPS or the floating production systems. Now principles, now size of FPSOs. So when you design FPSOs, first thing you have to make is the hull sizing or the layout. So first thing is as your FPSO says oil storage. oil storage capacity. Now this should be compatible with production rate because your ship is also a production platform. So as the name suggests, this is a production and storage, both these are in place. So oil storage capacity, this is compatible with oil production. So these are special types of ships, now these you have to figure out. And the other one is offloading to shuttle tanker. So they should have a offloading system, offloading of oil to shuttle tanker. The other, other point that is, that is to be noted in the design is provision of top side facilities. So this I think I have already discussed in detail, provision of top side facilities. So these include process plant. accommodation and utilities. So these are the hull design, the uh, other point is provision of displacement. 
the displacement has to be sufficient. So the, your hull form is essentially what? When you are doing the line span, so APS or hull form will be these two times. One is a tanker, either you can go for a tanker or, or a barge, barge lines, tanker lines or a barge lines. So your displacement, motions, stability will be uh, as per the barge and um, the tanker configurations. Now displacements and ballast capacity has to be provided. Now remember these are actually the job of the naval architects, okay. Now your the production in detail, the production and process layout will be done by the chemical engineer or mechanical engineer, but you have to configure all this. So this displacement and ballast capacity is essentially provided to reduce motions. So I told you earlier that offshore uh, systems, their main job is to reduce motions, otherwise it will hamper with your production rate and you have to shut down the platform. The other point which is more crucial is provision of space. for production turret. So this is your part of your turret mooring, this is your mooring system. So the turret actually is a point for taking out the oil from the oil well and also mooring the tanker, so it, it serves both the purpose. So this is the, now turret actually will require a lot of space in the hull. The first thing you, you, you have to play around with space, now as naval architect this is very important, space so and what? Weight items. space and weight. So these are the two items which you have to optimize. Now remember you cannot, you, you, you are not supposed to have a huge space because that will also consume lot of cost. You increase the hull size uh, enormously, so that will also increase cost although you may reduce motions to some extent. But motions you will also find that it is very largely dependent on water plane area water plane area and ballast, motions you will find, you will, I'll, you will come across those formulas is highly dependent on water plane area, in short I am writing this, water plane area and ballast water. So naval architects should be very careful about this, so you have to have uh, water plane area and also ballast water, now water plane area if you keep on increasing you have lot of heave motions, so then again you have to damp the motion by giving ballast, isn't it? So these are some of the uh, drawbacks of having a ship shaped form. Anyway, so uh, this is the hull design uh, parameters, the other part is uh, the uh, motions, now motions you will find, motions is weather vaning they call. Now weather vaning you will find well, what is the L by B ratio of a tanker. So weather vaning should be good that is the ship should be friendly with the motions that are coming from the wind and waves. Now tanker L by B, tanker L by B is around 6 is to, six is to 1. Now whenever you are doing the lines plan, you, you just do not do it blindly, 
Okay, the line span that you have been drawing, the cargo ship line span, how much is your LYB? So these actually, uh, you may be asked, or you may, should be uh, at your fingertips. Now this is necessary because of this gives good volume. Good volume and less resistance to forward motion. So these are some of the design parameters, you know. But the design optimi optimization, you see, and FPSO and tanker will have different design objectives. Now this is essentially good for tankers because tankers, what is their main work or main job is tankers, then the actually the hull form design of tankers is built around what tankers have evolved over the years because tankers normally you will find they are predominantly very large in size. Yeah, because this gives your uh, economics in the transportation of oil from one place to if you transport large volumes at a time, then obviously the cost is less. So tankers, you know, the VLCCs and ULCCs have evolved because of this. So those are basically dependent on the trading pattern. Now your FPSOs actually they will not be asked to do this. FPSOs are basically oil production systems, okay. They are not involved in transporting oil from one place to another or this is called trading pattern or trading economics. Now here actually the cost and the economics is the basis of production of oil. So how do you calculate the cost and the profit from an FPSO? It will not be the same as your tanker, isn't it? Tankers your the return on the investment is based on the large volume of oil that you carry from one place to another. There is a turnover or the profit and here it is dependent on the production of oil and also offloading to shuttle tanker. So you calculate this. So actually the objectives of these two categories of vessels are different and with that actually your design will be, the design objective is different. But essentially tankers you will find because of the very high cost of making a new build, so they have converted tankers to FPSO. Now this actually will entail lot of structural modifications. So you have to do hull form modifications. <laughs> so if you happen to visit one of the Singapore yards, you will find they are doing a lot of conversion work on tankers, converting tankers to FPSOs. So you have to undergo a lot of hull form modifications. These are basically this is you will do the uh, what is called the volume, volume and structures. So you convert your tanker to an FPSO. The major thing is in way of turret. So actually your tankers uh, you will find, but if you want to make an FPSO, first thing that you have to do is what? Your deck layout. 
Well, deck layout is very tricky in case of a FPSOs because you have to the deck layout is guided by your production facilities, your production and offloading facilities. Now this you have to have a thorough knowledge of. Now a normal tanker will not have this kind of uh, arrangement, but again you have to modify, basic, basically you have to modify the deck of the tanker. So that is one big job. The other big job is location of turret. where you are going to locate the turret. The turret is actually if you look into the diagrams you will find that is a very large structure and ship actually weathered vanes about turret. Ship weather winds about turret. Ship means in this case FPSO, not your tanker. So now where you are going to locate this turret? So tar turret is a massive weight concentration and also point of swiveling of the ship about turret. So this is another major items which you have to configure. So normally turrets you will find turrets. This you will find integral with bow. <coughs> or you can go to overhang from bow. So these are the two configurations you will come across FPSOs. So which one you choose will depend on, now uh, these are two things, now turret actually you will find will consume lot of space. So turret actually it eats into your oil storage holds. your oil storage will be sacrificed because uh, it, it might consume the volume of say one and a half hole you go. Now if you do not want that you simply position the turret away from the bow. So you will find your now you have to the bow has to be modified if you are modifying a tanker so the bow will have to take care of the turret. So here you have to make some modification and the turret will be hung from the bow. So this is called a bow turret. The integrated uh, turret is you take the turret inside the bow. Now there are definite advantages and disadvantages. You will find that if you have a turret which is overhanging from the bow, so that is not a very good friendly design when the FPSO is going from one place to another where it will increase bow resistance from the wave. But the advantage that you will be getting is larger storage volume in the forward region. So four peak has to be redesigned. Four peak redesign. Now if you do four peak re redesigning, then the four peak actually the lot of forces that will come is the major force is coming from slamming that is your pitching, bow pitching is very much predominant in this case. So turret will be exposed to lot of pitch at the bow, okay. Now here actually, so this slamming if you want to reduce then you go for reduce 
or reduction. Reduction you go for greater immersion or greater draft, greater draft at bow. So that will reduce your slamming. So all these things you have to uh, encounter. So if you want to go for increase in draft, that is you increase ballast. Ballast water has to be in this region or you just increase the draft of the ship. So these are some of the design configurations which they are mainly coming into place because of this turret mooring. Now the from the weather training, now tankers uh, uh, tankers, uh, some of the systems are uh, common, so tankers will have, so these systems you can utilize. So the main thing is how to be cost effective when you are converting a tanker to an FPS. Now tankers will always have cargo oil storage, so you can use that. So the holds of the tanker can also be used, but the only problem that we are coming is with the turret moving, where to place the turret. So the, this thing will always be there, then it may have other COW systems or crude oil wash. So this also can be used, this is called crude oil wash. Other systems which you can use is inert gas. Now tanker design, you will be you have, you have to be very very cautious about the safety systems. Inert gas is all these holes are inerted. If you want to clean or do some work, say welding or anything, this uh, uh, they are vented and inerted. Then you have a ballast water system, fuel oil system and safety system. So these are already present, so you can be used ballast, fuel oil and safety systems. <coughs> so tanker, tanker designs, you have to be thorough about all these systems. The other modifications that will be coming is the turret design of, uh, I have already told you. Now you, you will not be designing the turret, so turrets are essentially bought out items. So the shipyard will not be fabricating the turret, but it will give the contract to some other company. So normally these are manufactured by SBM, Imodco. blue water, then you have APL, so they are given by the websites you can see, so these are some of the companies which manufacture turrets, so you have to give your requirements to these people along with the hull form. So I have uh, told you this, uh, this is called the overall or this can be called a cantilever turret. This is called a cantilever turret. So integrated turret or a cantilever, integrated turret or cantilever turret.
So these are the two types of turrets you will find. Now this turret is actually going to open up the hull. If this is an integrated turret, so this opens up the hull. Now if you want to open up the hull, so that at that region you will find there is loss of strength, especially regarding to hull girder bending and shear. So in rules actually specify if you remove any material from the ship that has to be compensated. Removal of material has to be compensated. So because this will lead to reduction in bending so this is reduction to uh, you know, your, your causes bending failure actually. Bending failure will occur here. So you do not give sufficient material which is compensated because of this turret. So heavy st stiffening, heavy stiffening has to be done by, now in the region of the turret obviously you cannot have a bulkhead or a flat bulkhead. So there will be a circular cylindrical bulkhead. cylindrical bulkhead <coughs> with radial stiffness. So this is the structural configuration in way of turret with radial stiffness and oil sealing and or rather you write sealing. <coughs> at bottom of turret. Turret connection to hull. So this is one major design. So actually your, see this is your say ship. Now suppose your turret is out here. So that means basically if you want to install a turret you have to make a moon pool. There is a hollow in the hull. Now your, the mooring chains are going to come out like this. So you have to make provisions for what? Say this is your catenary mooring chains. Catenary mooring chains, see suppose the catenary mooring chains are going in this direction, it is going to exert pressure on the bulkhead of the bulkhead of the turret. So turret bulkhead has to be, you have to give very heavy stiffening at the bow. So there should be what is called <coughs> friction pads. friction pads on cylindrical bulkhead. To cushion moving loads, now this is actually the job of the naval architect. The turret supplier will just, you give him the hull configuration, the hull lines plan, he will give you a suitable turret. 
according to your production rate and all that and the mooring also. So, this is a very, very important calculation for naval architects. He has to order the turret. So, when you go to your say offshore company, so this is one of your job, but then you have to do very heavy stiffening at the turret region because you are cutting away the removing a huge portion of the hull. So, you have to make up by giving lo lot of longitudinal runners, longitudinal guarders and extra stiffening you have to do around this region. So, this is one job and the other thing is the mooring loads are actually being transferred to the hull in way of turret. So, for that you have to give friction pads, yeah, heavy stiffening around this region. So, this is normally done. The other portion is turret location. Now, turret location actually the most favorable lo location you will find is where say this is the stern of the ship, where you are going to locate the turret. Now, turret location should be turret location in minimum motion. minimum motion of ship. Now, if you want to do, do this, you will find the ship is having minimum motion at where? Ship which is about LCF point, is not it? So, minimum mo motion will occur at LCF, minimum motion will occur where? At LCF region, because there you would not have any pitching, but he will be they are still there. So, the motions that will that are Im important for turret locations are mainly heave, heave and pitch. So, these two motions actually interferes with with riser couplings. So, you have to be very careful about this, you have to calculate which location of the ship will give minimum heave and pitch. So, you cannot compromise compromise on this. So, sometimes all this mooring in uh, of course, in turret design this may not be possible, you have a heave compensating mechanism. So, the best place will be to locate turret around LCF or around midship if it LCF is not possible because in the midship you will find you will be getting a larger cross sectional area. So, you have to have sufficient volume and also sufficient sectional area. Sectional area if you have a large sectional area, so at this region you will get larger volume and also you can have extra stiffening on the midship, but at the midship you will find as in your ship strength calculation the bending moment is actually coming at the maximum bending moment occurs at midship. So, again you have to re redesign the whole ship, you have to again calculate what is where the location of your maximum shear force bending moment with turret. So, turret is a large weight item in the ship. So, these sort of things you have to do. So, interferes with riser coupling. So, this has to be taken care of in your design. So, turret sizing, turret has to be efficiently sorry, this you have to give to the vendor. So, turret sizing, this is based on transfer of mooring loads to hull. So, this you have to do. So, like your propeller thrust, your propeller thrust is actually you have to transfer the propeller thrust to the hull by means of 
friction pads or friction bearings. So, they are called thrust bearings. So, likewise you have to similarly have major thrust bearings out here from the turret. Now, remember these are actually huge forces say few hundred tons or thousands of tons are coming at this region. So, those have to be catered for and the weather vaning criteria, the weather ship actually weather vanes about turret. Weather vane is because most of your mooring is around this region. So, you have a chain table where all these moorings are moving chains are attached. So, ship weather vanes about sorry about turret ship good weather vaning characteristics. Now, weather winning characteristics is given by your L by D ratio. Now, this L by D ratio, there is an optimum value which is given, given here, I think it is 1 by 5 probably. I will just check on that. L by D ratio should be around 1 is to 5 or something like this. Sorry, this is 5 is to 1. I will just give you, I will just check and give, give you this, this not here actually. Anyway, these are some of the things which should be remembered or a good, right simply good L by ratio. This value I will give you later. Now, this is one region, one is turret location. this we have finished. Now, now, next is accommodation. Now, accommodation is also very important. Now, there are two types of accommodation which you can go for is bow accommodation and the other is stern accommodation. So, which one you prefer? This is the first category or this is the second. Now, bow accommodation has certain advantages. Now, here actually disadvantages. Now, the advantages are safety. Because fires, smoke, you keep them away from accommodation. So, accommodation layout is the job of the naval architect. So, this is centered around your deck, deck planning or deck layout. <coughs> now, this accommodation disadvantages is accommodation actually displaces turret. Now, where you are having this turret, you cannot have accommodation or where you are having accommodation, you cannot have turret. So, this is one of the main region. Now, turret will get displaced. The other is bow is actually gives higher crew comfort. I do not know why because bow will have lot of pitching also. And pitching is not very good for the crew, but here it is crew comfort in view of this is uh, 
because of this I think fire and smoke. So, accommodation has to be kept away from these two and heat that may be the reason. Disadvantage can be like buoyed deployment. Now, this is one of the disadvantages if you have a bow, bow accommodation. This obviously will be, we have to sacrifice your cargo tank for providing accommodation. Flare stack to stern. Your flare stack that is your gas flare. So, that is if your your natural gas is flared, you have to remove it this away from accommodation region. Otherwise, that will cause lot of heat and fire hazard to the crew. Next, you require a firewall. shield accommodation from turret. So, turret is a likely point for fire. So, it is better not to have accommodation next to turret. If you have a bow turret, you go for stern accommodation, do not go for bow accommodation. And stern accommodation advantages, disadvantages. Now, these points are to be taken care of when you are doing your GA. So, main advantages is like boat deployment. <coughs> So, normally you will find the lifeboat of the ships are located at the stern of the ship. The disadvantage is higher motions. No firewall. Disadvantage is if you have aft accommodation, then smoke, flame actually blows towards accommodation. So, this is the major risk. If you have accommodation at stern and turret at the bow. So, turret catches fire that means the flame and everything will go to the accommodation region. But if you have accommodation at the forward end and turret top, that thing will not occur. Now, best location of turret you will find <coughs> is one third L from bow. So, this has been formed from a good design.
Now, APSO first thing is you concentrate on turret, next accommodation, safety systems. This is very crucial. Now, under safety systems, you have say, under the third category, and the final is number four is offloading systems. Inert gas. Tank venting. Now, this you have to provide in ships according to SOLAS requirement. You look up SOLAS and it will give you the inert gas what is the inert gas tank pumping and everything you will find, what is the requirement for ventilation of your cargo tanks. So, this is tank venting is cargo tank ventilation. Now, your cargo tank will be carrying oil, flammable liquid. So, in FPSOs you have to ventilate the pockets. So, turret in that case also turret has to have ventil good ventilation. To exclude <coughs> gas formation or gas collection. This also you, uh, you should be taken care of designed when you design your turret and the portion of the ship where turret is come out that is called moon pool. So, turret actually goes with moon pool design. Now, these two turret and moon pool should be ha should have good ventilation otherwise flammable gas will start collecting in your trapped <coughs> volume and that is a potential source for fire, suddenly it will ignite. So, this you better take care of. The other is when you design the deck layout. So, one of the things I told you that suppose your turret catches fire or your production region catches fire, then you should not spread to accommodation very quickly. So, you have to barrier the segregate the accommodation area from production areas by means of firewalls. The other is safety system is inert gas tank winding system in cargo tank. Then you have tank <coughs> washing system. So, tanks have to be they are called this is mainly done by a COW system or a crude oil wash. Good. Then ballast water systems. So, these are the provisions you have to keep when you are designing an FPSO. Now, this ballast water, why you require ballast water? Suppose your APSO has transferred all the oil to a shuttle tanker, why this ballast water is required? In case of APSOs, Now, remember this is, this is sort of questions you can be asked in the 
interview. Ballast water is essentially given to reduce motions and what? Increase draft. Suppose you are asked in an interview why you give ballast water. Reason that you should do is reduce motions. Motions are primarily dependent on two aspects I told you. These are dependent on water plane area and what? Displacement. Water plane area and displacement. So, these are two of the prime considerations is reduce motion, increase draft for what? Now, in your interview, you know, they will not ask any complicated formulas. They will simply ask all these questions. Draft is increase for what? Good stability. And propeller immersion. Uh, remember these points. <coughs> Propeller immersion is required when you, when the vessel actually sails from one point to another. Otherwise, you may not require this, but good stability. That is why in tankers actually, tankers, empty tankers have very large freeboard and that is not very good for your dynamical stability, because large windage area, G will go higher up, GM will be reduced and all sorts of things will happen. So, that is why good immersion is required, ballast water. So, this is some of the systems which you have to study. Next is a fire prevention system. Now, this also uh, in this class I cannot go into details. Now, when you go for ship systems, you study this bilge. Normally, ships have bilge come fire come general service. So, pumps and piping systems. So, when you design, you design a bilge which will service your piping will be common to both bilge come fire come general service systems. So, this conforms to, this should conform to SOLAS. SOLAS you look up this bilge come fire come general service then ABS. Lloyds. Especially you be careful with tankers and FPSOs. Tankers and FPSOs, they are very complicated bilge and fire and general service pumps and piping systems in the ship. So, this you have to think about. Then uh, coming to this fire prevention, you have deck foam. Uh, quickly let me finish because time is up. Deck foam system is the most primary thing. And then heli deck. Then you have accommodation. So, this is fire water. Then you have a deluge come foam. So, that means the whole area is engulfed with a foam. So, refueling tanks. <coughs> Process platform. So, 
swivel stroke turret then uh, these are the main this thing segregation of fire water then fuel oil systems this is the fuel oil piping fuel oil storage So this you have to think out of. The last that is to be discussed is your offloading systems. So this is you will not find this system in conventional tankers. So here you have number one offloading reel. So this is a very large where the offloading hose is wound that is called a trailing hose to shuttle tanker and a loading buoy. So these are some of the parts of a offloading system in FPSOs. This is unique to FPSOs. So with this we conclude our design of FPSOs, now next we will go to semi submersibles. So semi submersible TLPs and sparse with that we'll